This is Infection, the H1Z1 podcast, recorded live on Tuesday, June 2nd, 2015, episode 20. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Infection, the H1Z1 podcast. Infection is your source for the latest information on H1Z1. We bring you the latest news, change logs, developments, strategies, and speculations each and every week. My name is Nick Craig at Gamecast Live is my Twitter, and InfectionPodcast.com is the website. Joining me again, Brian Aldridge. Hello, everybody. If you want to get a hold of me, first of all, my blog that you can go to is BiteOfTech.com. Of course, we all know that's with an I. Um, oh, yes. I, always, I forget what letter we're supposed to be on, so I'll just go with the I today. Uh, or if you want to go to Google.com forward slash plus Brian Aldridge, that will take you to my Google Plus page, which has information about me as well. And, of course, the easiest way, just go to infectionpodcast.com. Everyone will remember that. There's a contact form on there, and that will go to Nick and I. So whichever method you want to reach me. Brian, I have a request for next week. Can you give us your ICQ number at the beginning of the show? Just in case. Six seven seven one forty. <laughs> oh, okay. Very good. Just so there we can, go. just so we can hey, chat. That's you. a, that's a low ICQ. That number. is a very low. Or, they're into yeah, like I was the, one of the, I was one of the original ICQ. They're people. into like the hundreds of millions on their numbers. Yeah, I know. And like, I'm like, I'm in the top uh, 700,000. It it's like a binary string. It never ends. Yep. Uh, it keep, the... keeps going. Who uses <laughs> ICQ though? I don't think I've ever really received a message on ICQ. I just signed up for an account. Do you still have it installed on your computer? No, but I, I once in a while, like every four years, I'll go and log into it just to see that it's still active. <laughs> All right. Good, good to know. This week in ICQ. Um, so send me a message on ICQ today, and four years from now I may reply. <laughs> well, well, this podcast will be long gone in the four years. There, oh, there's have some hope, Nick. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, okay. This is this is the H1Z1 podcast. We cover the latest on H1Z1. Um, this was an interesting week. Um, last week's patch was late, but about a day late. There was a so that's a thing. Uh, so it was after our show. It was after our show. The pre-live stream patches, which are supposed to be on Mondays, didn't happen this week either. So that was behind, yeah. according to, believe it was Schmedley, put on uh, on Reddit that the build wasn't strong enough for them to do a build stream last night. So they they, they didn't do that. Um, but the patch is actually up today. And it was it, they went up at, or it started at 12 p.m. Pacific today. And it lasted about two and a half hours because they also did daybreak server maintenance. So it was about a two and a half hour maintenance. Uh, yeah. And then it was back up then. So the, the, we're on track. This is the first week besides the pre-patch last that we are on track. We had the Thursday they test actually, server well, update. Yeah, they didn't have the, the stream, but they actually did it on the day that they said they yes. were going to do it. So I, th I think Move. we're good now. Moving up. Eventually, we'll have all three things in a row. We'll have the Thursday, the Monday, and well, the Tuesday. They never really did say when, like what time of day, because we were trying to speculate on, is it going to be 2 a.m. they're running these patches, 5 in the afternoon? Yeah, I, I'm wondering if going forward, this is going to be if noon Pacific is going to be what they're going forward with. That's lunchtime, though. So, like, you know, somebody's going to be out getting a burger and, you know, all hell breaks loose and who knows? Yeah, I, I'm sure they can stagger their lunches. <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, I and I like, wonder last night, how bad could it have been that they couldn't do that pre-patch exactly live stream? That's exactly what I, Well, last I mean, night. something must have been crashing like crazy or not displaying correctly. Because even last night, we were making some, or our clan was making some preparations for things today. And I said, hey, guys, just, you know, FYI, Adam, or it wasn't even Adam, somebody put on Reddit that the build wasn't even stable enough for them to do a live stream. So I wouldn't make any plans in game. Um, but the, that's the thing. I mean, what could have changed in... 12 hours. In 12 hours. <laughs> like, uh, essentially 12 hours. So there must have been some huge game-breaking issue. Uh, but the one big thing that we need to keep in mind here, this patch th that came out today did not uh, fully deal with all the crashing issues. Yeah. So we need to that's put that been, out there. That's been one thing that a lot of people have been commenting on in our team speak is that constantly they're being kicked out. And it's been really difficult to want to go raid or, or mm -hmm. to even go out with any sort of loot or drive a vehicle because there's such a high percentage that you're going to crash out. And, um, I, and then that same Reddit thread last night, somebody asked about crashing and he said that they're working on getting a crash fix up on the test servers. And once yeah. it's stable on the test servers, they'll roll it live. But now, now we're going to go into our second week of uh, crashes because since Tuesday's patch, 
whatever they did, uh, or actually it was last Wednesday's patch, whatever they did last Wednesday totally screwed up crashing, server-side crashes and client-side crashes. Um, and yeah. like, like Brian said, a lot of our members, uh, not, me not so much luckily, and I don't think Brian as much either, but have just had crazy issues with crashing. The game is almost completely unstable. Uh, well, lately I haven't been crashing hardly at all. So I crashed a few times here and there. So for me, that was a big, big change. Mm -hmm. But there's some people that, you know, every 15 minutes, 20 minutes, they're crashing out, which realistically you're in a car, if driving anywhere, in that period of time you crash out, your car starts floating in the air and most likely is going to explode at some point and you're going to die. Well, even the bigger problem with that, Brian, not even talking about cars, let's just talk about the fact if there's zombies around you, if you're running in the middle of the woods and there's zombies around you, you're killing zombies and you crash out and there's nobody there to yeah. help you, you're dead too because those zombies are just going to kill you. And that seems to be how, when I crash, that's how I die. Either there's a zombie around or I've had it to where I'm in the middle of Pleasant Valley. I crash out and that, I guess I go running across all of Pleasant Valley yeah. right down the middle of the road. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and, and someone shoots me at some point. You know, of course, I'm not there to see it, but that's what I'm assuming happens is, is somebody shoots me as I'm just running down the road. Yeah, and, and, and Ferment is bringing up the point, chat that even people with uh, like high-end gaming PCs are still having this crash problem. This is a game-wide issue. This is not just limited It's not to... like a limited resources type of crash. And, yeah, I, and, definitely and this not. kind of makes me wonder, does it have something to do with some anti-cheat or something that they're trying to implement? I'm not sure. What kind of thing could they have implemented that would, that would cause this level of crashing? Oh, that is, exactly. And, and the other thing, Brian, we also have to talk about is server-side crashing. That's also been a huge problem in... Our, with our group with growing crops, that's been a huge yeah. issue. It, it seems to keep resetting the crops. Because the so servers you're, are you're growing and trying to set a timer for this. Yeah. The server reboots and it starts your crops over. I know that Falcon was running into a lot of problems where if the crops were ready to harvest, it wouldn't reset the crops. They would just be gone. So you would lose all of those crops that were ready to go when the server resets. Yeah. So, that, that's been a, so we've got a combination of clients and servers both crashing at the same time and that's pretty much been the past week it has gotten better they did they did a hot fix at some point that they didn't publicize because the crashes were yeah. let's say last thursday or friday the patches were like the crashing was really really bad like like unbelievable like almost people were just saying you know screw this this is my 15th time crashing tonight i'm done playing but now hey, it's it's once or twice now you had an opportunity to play some today. Did you have? You, I saw you were on a little I bit logged after in. the patch. I was in for like five minutes. Okay, that, so that you didn't it. get to see. I, I'm wondering if the clan members noticed after this update if they were getting about the same number of crashes. Yeah, that's the the one thing with us having to do the show right after the the, the patch is we don't really have as much time to play as we'd like. Um, but the, the, like Brian said, there was a patch today and it was at twelve o'clock. Uh, so let's get into what the official patch notes are for this June 2nd patch. Starting it off, the biggest thing in here, Brian, is the Magnum and the 44 Magnum. Uh, so the gun is the Magnum, and then it's uh, .44 the 44 Magnum. ammo, yeah. Yeah, and uh, one quick note about the ammo. It's the same color as the 45 ammo. So it's that green ammo box that you just always see sitting around, which is something that they're going to have to fix that Sometimes always drives soon. me crazy because the, the shotgun ammo, there's a couple different ammo types that look so similar. Yeah. Or they have the same box. It's shotgun 380, 308, and then it's 45 and AR that are the same ammo. So you're always hoping, it's like you're going to get 380 or, or 308 with this one box. You're kind of going, to, going up there saying, oh, come on, be 308. And it's <laughs> usually always 380. Of course, it's always 380, without a doubt. It's always that disappointment. <laughs> well, because like you see the three and you're like, yes, and then it's eight. And you're like, damn, so close. Uh, yeah. So that's up there. And we've actually got a few screenshots of, of the Magnum. So the first two pictures that I'm going to be showing you here, this is it on the floor in a Battle Royale. Um, and you can see it says, take the 44 Magnum there. And then we've got another picture, and this is, a, this is actually it in somebody's hand. Um, and this is, again, in Battle Royale. So you can see that this is with it in the hand. And you can actually, something interesting about this model, you can actually see the finger on the trigger which I was actually surprised about. Uh, that, that would just seem like a, something that they would totally forget to put into the game. Um, but yeah. you can actually see that the pointer finger on the trigger there, uh, which is nice. And then our fourth picture now, here... Now, when you I'm fire, because I mean, they always have these problems where these guns seem like they're halfway cocked. On this one, I assume you see the, uh, 
the, the actual, you know, the pin back. Well, yeah, actually moving back when the shot happens. You see it there in the picture. It's it's actually back. Yeah. I'm wondering if it's going to be back all the time. Like, actually, in this it, picture, it doesn't. This, it, it's not back in this picture. It's it's down. On it's the not, one that's from the side? Yeah, it's not back. Oh, from the so side. Let me see. Hold on. From that second one you showed, it no, seems like down. it's pulled back there. That's still no, down. No, no. Yeah, okay. No, they're both the same position. Yeah. But the hammer. So there we yeah, go. Yeah, the hammer Whitetail, is down. Whitetail, who loves to shoot, of course, yeah. it's going to remind us. But that, this one thing on that. Um, the hammer's half I would really interested to see. There. Do you see the barrel rotate? Do you see the hammer go back? Um, you know, when you fire, those are things that I like to see. And I'm wondering if they're actually putting that in this build, or if it's going to be you just see kind of a, of a flare from the muzzle. Yeah. Now, the one thing to bring up that's interesting is uh, I asked a few. There was like six or seven people in Teamspeak, and I said, "Hey, have any of you guys seen the Magnum in game yet?" And they said no. And then I don't remember who it was. Um, I think it was Musty hopped into yeah. Battle Royale. And was able to pick up the Magnum in Battle Royale. So that's what he did. Um, and he, the interesting fact he made. This is typical Daybreak stuff here. There's no, ma there's no ammo with the Magnums in game yet. So he said in Battle Royale he picked up two different Magnums. And neither of them had ammo next to them. So, so. this is one thing that they <laughs> ran into with the, uh, this was the, the, crossbows. the crossbow. And then we'll be talking about. Um, I think that is in one of these notes. About the crossbows not having ammo with them. Of course you always had the bows. Yeah. And you had the ability to make ammo. Uh, with this, if they don't put it in game, there are no uh, there are no workbenches or anything well, in VR to in be able game, to go and craft this. Apparently, it's in game. It's just not um, next to the actual guns. with the gun, which is useless. I mean, in, in my opinion, and why would you spawn a gun without without ammo next to it? That seems just... like they've been they've been better at that lately, though. Because yeah. I remember there was a period of time when they made some patch, and we actually talked about it during the show, to where they they made it so that the guns and the ammo didn't always spawn next to each other. And I'd run into a building and find all of the wrong kind of ammo for every single gun that was in there. And you could go through a couple of houses and you wouldn't find the right kind of ammo. It seems like they haven't been having that as much lately. Pretty yeah. much if you go into a house, you're most likely going to find some sort of ammo that's made for the gun in there. If you get into an unlooted house... And you're the first one in there. There will be gun for. There will be ammo for the gun for one of the guns you're picking up in that house. It's almost guaranteed, uh, like Brian said. So that's. So th I'm assuming this is a bug that they're just going to have yeah. to throw the ammo around. It mainly, they probably didn't just put the spawn points everywhere. They put the gun in, but they have to go through and say, "All right, here's the random spawn points for this mm -hmm. type of of gun." So this for the ammo. So the third image here was actually rendered out by somebody in our community. Ferment rendered this out, and uh, you can see it right here. This is a high quality render of the Magnum. And uh, you can find this on, this will be on our website, infectionpodcast.com as well. And uh, this is just, this is just the high quality render from, uh, from the game files. Uh, and if you were to pull that up on your computer, it would look a little bit better than it does on the stream. But there is your, uh, your high quality model from the game. So you can check out all three of those uh, screenshots or uh, images all over at the website, infectionpodcast.com. So that was the first uh, note in this uh patch that they updated today now so now the, another thing they did was the tear gas grenades mm -hmm. and i know people were running around looking for those uh to see what the visual effects that would change when the when the tear gas grenade was thrown but it creates a cloud of gas that will obscure vision and it causes coughing and it does a small amount of damage so uh one thing is the full face respirators make it so that the gas does not affect you yeah now somebody uh, was playing around with this and they said they threw the tear gas and had to run through it and it did it and it did about 10 percent damage to them so that, that yeah, that's quite a bit and, and that's I mean, what i was saying so you i mean in this that he threw it so he did it to himself because he threw it and then ran through it to get across to the other side of the building um but that was interesting that's a significant amount of damage especially if you're go if it's a gunfight and you're in a 1v1 gunfight and you're able to damage him maybe 15 20 percent with that your yeah. odds have just, I think, skyrocketed in terms of winning that gunfight now that he's, you know, maybe 80% health or 85% health and you're at 100. And that's what I've not really noticed anything with the flashbangs. Did, I didn't ever see any kind of damage with the flashbangs. No, I don't so it would think, make it so you couldn't see, but yeah. there was no actual damage. No. So this gives you that debilitate, debilitating effect of not being able to see or, you mm -hmm. know, obscures your vision. Um, coughing probably makes you, you know, bend over and start coughing. And then the damage together. So that's a pretty powerful, as you know, not a huge amount of damage overall, 10%. But the fact that you can't move, you're taking 10% damage plus the most, but likely you're going to be shot at that point mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So it, it, depending on how 
while you play it, the person who's throwing it, that could easily win you a gunfight. Uh, pretty significant uh, there. It, it's interesting. They say small amount of damage. That's not a small amount of damage. 10% is a lot of damage for yeah. you to be losing from that. T 10 plus. Because when you get shot, it takes like 30% chunks a lot of times. Yeah. Well, depending uh, on even even if you, you take a body shot. Yeah. So that may be so two body couple, shots. A couple of air shots. Yeah. Then you're out. I mean, it could be the chance between life and death. So I noticed in this patch, they, they made some changes to the actual building. And this is yeah. something that always interests me. Go ahead. But, but they're saying that with those large structures, they can now be picked back up. And I'm, I'm assuming this is within a 30-second window of placing it. That's kind of what, what the they, ground tampers are, right? It's 30 seconds you have a chance to replace yes. it? Yes. And they didn't put in here. I know when they did the ground tampers, they actually said the amount of time. But they said on here, the large structures can now be picked back up. So I'm, I'm thinking it's kind of that same 30-second window that you have. Um, you place something down, and then, oh, I'm changing my mind. That's not right. Or mm -hmm. with me, I place the, to where the door's in the wrong place. <laughs> You know, and rather having to destroy it, you can you can now pick it right back up, which is nice. Yeah. So now the only you can't do that with deck foundations yet, though, can you? It's only currently ground tamps and the large structures are the only two that they said, I think. Yeah. So I, th I think they're kind of throwing them in there one at a time. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't know why they wouldn't be able to do it for almost anything you place. It seems like they, other once than they did maybe it for you'd one. place a container, have someone use it for. 20 seconds and then pick it back up. I mean, I can't imagine how yeah. you could abuse that privilege. Yeah. Um, but it seemed like it was something that once they implemented it for one object, it would be pretty simple to implement for another. So I'm not sure. They've, they've got all the code in there to do it. Once they did it for the ground tamper, they should have just been, it, able to it's copy. all there. Yeah. So I, I, but it's got to just be something that, you know, once per patch, they're just going to start throwing items in there. Now, the next thing, Brian, I think this is again, Daybreak not being too clear with what they're trying to say, in my opinion. The next uh, update on this list says abandoned bases with nothing on them will expire after an hour. By bases, do they mean ground tamps? Do they? I mean, what is classified as a base here? Is it the is it the structure? Is it? I mean, is it a shack? Is it? What is a base? So that's where this could really mean either a. It could be a ground tamper. I mean, it could be the foundation. Um, it's kind of hard to say. And when yeah. they mean expire, do they mean that it disappears? That's exactly what I or was... Or do they mean that it's claimable? That's what was very unclear. I would imagine it's the ground tampers because you've seen... They're, we even did it. We littered them all over the map where we could, where we would say, all right, we might want a base here eventually, and we would go and throw a ground tamp down and say, hey, yeah. we'll save this for a little bit later. Um, and I imagine when they say expire, they mean somebody else can claim it. I would think. No, I was thinking at first with the ground tampers that, that this was going to mean that when they when they placed it and then they didn't bother putting a structure on it, that it was going to disappear. But I'm not really getting that from this. I, the way that they worded this, I, I'm kind of thinking that you're right, that this is something where it's claimable after that, that hour period. Yeah. But think about but it. Well, we're going to have not... to go and try it. I mean, it, right now, there's not people... When there hasn't been enough play time to know that if an hour <laughs> later when someone plays something that we can, whether it's disappearing or actually claiming it. So yeah. we'll have to test that. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens with that. But th this is going to fix a lot of the griefing that we see, yeah. that we see all over the map. Um, but now, I mean, an hour, that's a short amount of time. I mean, realistically, yeah. imagine if you, what go, if you crash out exactly, and you're not able to get within an hour. Per, exactly what you said. You crash out and your player runs off into the distance and, and, get, and gets killed by a zombie. Is an hour enough time for you to build those resources back up to place something on that ground tamper? I'm not sure. So yeah. I, I, I think an hour is too short. They may have to tweak that. I mean, an hour could even be if you're, if you're building a base in D1 and you know, you're all the way in like E10. I mean, yeah. the, realistically, driving up there just to get the ground tamper down and, and driving back, and maybe your car blows up on the way down. And you have to run, and you have run to back go up. and remake all those materials. Well, not even remake the materials, but like you drive up there, place the ground tamper, drive back down to your base to get the materials. Your car blows up, and now it's an hour enough time for you to run all the way back to your base, get all your resources, and run all the way back up there and place it down. Who knows? Yeah. So it's, the, an hour may not be long enough right now, but good concept because now this will mean. The other issue I see with this is. People are just going to be claiming them, and then they're going to expire. People are just going to keep claiming them, and then they're just going to keep expiring. I don't see this being yeah, nonstop until I mean, people have got to go through. And it, I, I'm kind of wondering where if they place even a wall, if that's is gonna that going to be that is that going to be what about a chest? Non abandoned. Yeah, I mean, they could almost throw anything cheap down there and make this stick. So it's not really solving 100% of the problem because 
the people that want to grieve are now just going to change how they do it. They're going to now throw down a container, anything that will keep it staying there past that one hour mar one hour mark. And expire could also mean it disappears. I mean, that's a possibility as well. The, the, the wording was not very clear with this one. Um, I'd rather have it be, it will be um, removed or, or it will be claimable. Yeah. Uh, just odd that they're wording like this. <laughs> I think they think they do this for us, Brian. This is like they say, they, hey, they, they like to create a puzzle that we have to figure out <laughs> each and every week. Hey, they have to. Be, yeah. It gives us something to talk about. Right. Um, so now here's one that I just for me, I don't understand 100 percent. I understand that here's OK, here's what I do understand. They have a key binding for walking now, and I'm assuming they're going to be using this maybe for people that are recording videos for fun, for the role playing crowd. But realistically, what are you going to use walking for in this game when you don't lose health or, and you don't you lose if you're not sprinting, you're doing a standard run, you gain back all of that energy. Are they going to maybe change that later to where if you're walking, you gain energy? If you're just jogging, it stays the same. When you're sprinting, it goes down as far as your stamina. Um, that's what I'm wondering on here is, are they preparing for this? Because right now you can run and and your stamina starts going back up. And then as soon as you sprint, it starts going back down. But you're still going a pretty fast pace. There's no real, there's not that much of a penalty. I, I'm thinking that maybe they'll change it to where walking actually is what regenerates. Jo um, kind of that jog run st makes it stay the same and then the actual sprinting makes it go down because that makes a lot more sense to me because I don't feel like if I'm doing a jog, I get all my energy back. And for Matt in chat is saying, he, uh, he says he would love to auto walk when he's waiting for stamina. So I guess that's what but it's see, for. But see, all you need to do is just stop pressing shift and right now your stamina goes back up. But you have to hold down W. Yeah. This is an auto walk. I mean, this is just, this is the same thing as the plus key. But why, but why don't they do an auto jog? I don't know. Well, the, well, the for me it just seems like it's more for the visuals of hey, I'm walking around for fun, you know, for whatever well, wait, reason. They do. They have the auto sprint. Yeah, but you lose energy, you lose that stamina during that. Oh, okay. So okay. that's the thing is that's what I'm trying to say is you lose the stamina when you're doing the auto run. All right, so I'm a little um, confused here, Brian. So when you just press down W, what are you? What is that? Is that jogging or it's, run? It, it's like a it's like a jog run, and and you actually gain back your stamina when you do that. So I think that's what the auto. I think that's an auto key for W. But that's what they're doing. That's a fast walk. <laughs> but that but that's what it is. That that's what they're doing. So this is going to be an auto key for W. So there's only two types. There's only two types of movement right now. You either, yeah, they call either. it walking. I, I, okay, I, now that's one thing we'll have to try when we get into the game the, is seeing how fast of a pace it is. Is, is it slower than the standard? I'm not sure. Uh, so I mean, thing. right now you either press W and hold. You press W and you're walking one speed, or you hold down Shift and you're walking and you're running faster, or you press the plus key and it's like the W and the Shift. Couldn't you program like on a on a mouse or something that you press a button and it's just it's like holding down the W key. <laughs> Yeah, and, and Musty's also bringing up the point. You could always auto-run. You would just sprint and then punch the air, and then you would slow down and gain your stamina back. Um, yeah. So I think it's this is just an auto-key for W. Which, we'll have to try it out. Just walking, yeah. the, the walking term is what throws me off because I've never seen anything that seems like walking to me in the game unless you're looking down a scope and, and then start moving forward. That actually does a walk. Okay, interesting. So we'll have to see what that does. Um, the next thing, Brian, Hardcore BR. We played a little bit of this this week with the yeah. clan. Talk about a total cluster. Um, that's Hardcore BR for you. Essentially, the map, uh, everybody spawns in on the northeast side of Pleasant Valley by the housing developments. Everybody, yep. and I mean everybody in the game, spawns in in that exact same area. And it's a total free-for-all. People are running for the houses. People are running for the mansions. People are running for the dam. And that's pretty much hardcore BR. Um, and what they've done is they've the spawning is more distributed. I hope it's all still in PV. Like I hope it's just different well, sectors okay, so, of PV. So here's what I noticed immediately when with the new hardcore. First of all, when you start out in your parachute, you are exactly next to everyone. Yes. So the second that people talk, it's like the whole BR starting area. Times like a thousand. As if you're all standing right next to each other. So all the yelling and the screaming and the weird people are just right in your ears. How dare you call um, us weird, Brian? <laughs> it's bad. They are no, weird it's people. really bad because you'll be in the BR starting lobby and then it's just like total like ear rape because you know somebody is screaming into their microphone and they're at the exact same location as you. They got to fix that. This, this is another thing that really frustrates me about hardcore BR is I start landing, I'm halfway down to the ground and there's people already running around for guns. 
that's how all does that work? that's all computer speed i mean that's what i've been told time and time again and i've seen I mean, it time i've, and got, time I've again. got an eight core computer with uh, well what, it's 16 it's, gigs of ram i, I mean, think come on. it's a mixture of computer speed and server ping that's it, it's whoever's connecting first it, that's as simple as it is and that's why people with crappy computers suck at br for the most part because they're spawning I'm, in everybody else has already got guns and they're just hitting the ground i'm really tempted just to lower every setting to low and, and see, how, see how fast i can spawn into it i'm not but that that's always what it was now this may have changed um but i was always under the assumption that it was based on your because that waiting screen that you get after the lobby it starts and you have that waiting screen and then you're falling down from the sky that that load time is different for every person and See, that's, that's where they need to do like a five second countdown. And then you start falling. Yeah. That, that loads for everyone. And then you have the ability to start falling. I have because... a feeling that they're doing that right now to deal with lag so that everybody's not in the game at the exact same time. So that like people but are it's, just staggered. But I've run it. I don't know what it is about my load time. It seems like other people load that initial screen faster than I do. Um, and that's and what I don't it know is. if it's because of my rate array or what it is. But it seems like they always either get into the waiting area and they say, oh, I'm in this section before I can, or they're landing before I am. Yeah. So I, I'm, really, I'm really not sure. Um, but Pistol Pete is saying server ping. It, I think it's just a mixture of, of computer speed and server ping that determines how quick or... or how I'm tempted. To, I was so tempted to get a new video card after that happened. I was like, I need to get... You need to get the, the GTX new nine, nine, yeah, the, nine seven, the 970 like I have or whatever. Yeah, yeah, they, I'm so, yeah. Let's look at the 960 or 970. See, I've got a good graphics card, but I suck at first-person shooters, so it, 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 it right, does I me think. no good. Um, but you can send me the video card; I'll send you mine. Oh, perfect! I've got like five in the basement, <laughs> just AMD power cooler colors or whatever they are. Um, yeah, but yeah. So that, I mean, that's still a problem though, because we've got people in our clan that that play on. I'm going to say subpar computers. I mean, these yeah. are not these are not top of the. My computer was like what three months old. I built it right after we started doing the show because I needed a better computer. So I've got that advantage, but we've got people in our clan that are playing with, you know, three or four year old, just consumer grade laptops. And they're the ones that almost can't play BR. Yeah. We have some people that come in and, and we're all running around for a while and they said, Oh, I just landed. And it's like, we're fully loaded up. Yeah. We've got backpacks, helmets. Your only, <laughs> you know, your only everything. hope is that just somebody else wasn't already there. Yep. That's it. And for them, they're having to land somewhere way outside and then run in and hope, yeah, everything's not gone. So yeah. that is definitely a problem. I, I, so I think if they could come up with some sort of a loading countdown, maybe start the BR a little bit sooner. Um, and then, you know, there's a 10, even a 10 second countdown of, of just something's happening. Kind of like other games, they'll do that loading area, you know, mm -hmm. where there's a countdown to get everybody loaded in the game. The graphics are loaded and then they go down. Yeah, so that is uh, that that is definitely a problem, and I have a feeling it's something like they can't have all the people loaded in at the exact same time in BR. That's what honestly what I think it might be. That, I, I that's don't the only think thing so. that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, no, I I, th I think that they just need to create that loading screen of all right, here's all of the graphics loaded, and maybe even if you hang in the second for uh, hang in the air for five to ten seconds, yeah, just waiting. Just hold them there and then let them drop. I think that would fix a lot of that problem and make it a lot more fair for everybody, yeah. regardless of what kind of computer you have. Because right now it's not fair at all. I mean, seriously, yeah. you don't have a good computer, you're not going to win a BR. It's 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 almost a direct correlation, uh, computer yeah. speed. And, and also you have to look at a slow internet. I mean, there's there's people with just not, not great internet. Again, yeah, sub, you, I mean, that, you're not going to be able to fix that 100%, though. I mean, that's something that you're going to well, have no, to deal with. Well, no, but their load-in time is affected by cons computer speed and ping. And if they've got worse internet you know that that load time is going to take yeah. that much longer for them so like maybe i think 10 seconds would probably be that that perfect thing it would let 99 percent of the people load in and you'd have of course that one percent but other than that that should yeah. be all good um the next thing i saw there's a few pictures on reddit of this um when you get infected and you get those zombie powers brian um mm -hmm. they were sticking across multiple servers so there was like screenshots on reddit of people in br still having the zombie power so they essentially had esp and br um see i had the opposite problem i couldn't get rid of the night vision so you had that in every server. i would go into brs and every br everything would be bright green oh that's that's terrible. and so i was in the waiting area and i, I it took a i had to go in what, and out but, a number of times for it went away but everything you know you know how those the night vision goggles and during the daytime is just like a solid yeah you can't see light anything. green that's what I was having to deal with, and I was like, I can't play a BR like this. What was the problem that they used to have with BR, where you it would st something would take over from the actual game and load into BR? Was it your health or something the, like the that? The smoke. 
The smoke, yes. Remember that's the what smoke it was. would stick yes. around from from one game Ser- to another, yeah, or into the regular. To, yeah, from from server to server, or from game to yeah, that was bad. That's what. It so was. I'd quit a BR. I'd go into the regular game, and <laughs> be everywhere, everywhere would be green smoke. Yeah. So yeah. obviously that's still a problem, but that's with any of the zombie um, things, and I guess it's with night vision as well, which I wasn't aware. So of. now one thing I want to mention that's kind of linked to this, I put in there that zombie vision seems to have been removed from the game, and it seems to be a bug, I think. Because okay. people are saying that for some reason they are not getting the zombie vision anymore. And I wonder if it's a side effect from this. Maybe they didn't fix it quite correctly. Um, but but I'm, I have a link in there that says zombie vision removed, no mention of it in patch. And there's people talking about it on Reddit. And I'm not sure if this is something that everyone is seeing. Um, hmm. But yeah, a lot of people are saying they're not getting that zombie vision anymore after this patch happened. Yeah, and, and this this is a Reddit post that was submitted about an hour ago, so this is new new content here. Um, yeah, that's why I wanted to mention it. You know, kind of yeah. linked with with that patch note is perhaps there will be a quick hot fix or something that's going to correct this. But I, I'm thinking that when they when they tried to fix the uh, clearing up of the night vision or the zombie uh, vision, that this was a side effect of that. Yeah, you should have told me I would have hit the breaking news sound effect. That's that's close enough oh. to be breaking news, right? Uh, I was trying to spare people's ears. <laughs> moving on to our next uh, the item in the patch notes. Th- Brian, this has been now, so long. this is breaking lo- news. This, this should have been implemented. When did the game come out? Like five, four months ago, five months ago, something like that. This should have been January. implemented five months ago. Whenever the game launched, they should have implemented this. The Dew Collectors previously would only fill up one empty bottle at a time in one. And then it bottle. was empty. And then it was empty. So yeah. now... The dew collectors will fill up to five bottles of water at a time. This is big. I mean, realistically. Now, is it still like a one-hour refill time? I don't think for so. For the dew collector, it'll probably be. I think they fixed it, but we didn't even bother with dew collectors for the longest time because they, they were useless. You yeah. had to have somebody I mean, one, constantly. One bottle every hour is not enough. I mean, it doesn't even keep up with your your rate of declining yeah, thirst. Yeah, just one person. Now imagine a clan of 25 people and everybody's like, oh, do we have any water here? Have any water here? So um, Let me fill this up. Here's your one <laughs> bottle. Everyone else run to the river. Yeah, so that that, that is fixed. And Brian, you're actually, uh, I didn't throw this in the show notes, but going back to your, your suggestion last week about water from the water tower being stagnant and not dirty, that that is Ooh. now implemented. So the Brian, the God people, Aldridge. People do listen to us from, from Daybreak. Brian, so, the God Aldridge, has spoken. and um, you, you can send in goes. your game requests to contact at infectionpodcast.com. Yeah, we, but <laughs> it was weird. Gets it there. Yeah, see, so that that is now implemented. So it's it's wells and the water tower that give you stagnant water. Which makes, I mean, it makes total sense. Yes, of course, because dirty water made no sense at all. Uh, so that's now implemented as well. Um, and now they fixed the issue with the crossbows now. We have to. We still have to say this. When they originally added the crossbows to the game, they said that the crossbows were going to have an issue when you would be aimed in and reloading. They said that day one, so that yeah. that was definitely a problem. But now, the crossbows will no longer automatically reload in the iron sights. Um, and to now to begin the automatic reload process, uh, you know, unscope and then you'll. It'll start reloading and then you can see this. Back in. This always catches me off guard because I'll play some other games to where you automatically reload even when you're zoomed in. Yeah. Uh, so I get in the habit, some bad habit sometimes of staying zoomed in and kind of waiting for the reload to happen and it doesn't happen and I end up getting shot. Because you're just so, waiting for it. Because it, it's like, okay, I stop shooting, come on, reload. It, because some other games, it'll keep reloading even though you keep it, you, you keep kind of zoomed in on yeah, the side. Scoped in. Um, yeah. so that's been fixed. Now this will, you will no longer be stuck in because the problem is you're zoomed in and the guy, and you need to unscope to see where the person went and you can't. So you, all, your entire viewpoint is just this little circle on the screen, uh, while your crossbow reloaded. So that is now fixed. Um, drinking coffee. So the coffee's in, in, it's in a bottle and it will now actually yeah. return an empty bottle to your inventory. So you're not going to be losing that bottle. So and that was one thing people would, would drink coffee and you just lose bottles, which, you know, you can use bottles for rating. I mean, it just didn't make any sense yeah. that coffee would for lose For a single the bottle. player, bottle, having an empty bottle is doesn't mean anything. But for a group of people, now that you need bottles to create, what is it, ethanol and biofuel or just ethanol? Yeah, the, yeah for, for a lot of those different crafting recipes for rating yeah. or for you know, just some of the different things for farming, you have to have these bottles. And then, of course, we just have to have enough bottles to be able to fill up and purify so that people can people can actually survive while standing in the base yeah so we'd always have you know like 
people that were dealing with the farming. Yeah, like you know, when you kill somebody, when you kill a fresh spawn, take their bottles. Whatever you yeah. do, take their empty bottles. People, people in our clan are always like, don't leave the bottles. Yeah, so like that, that's our claim to fame. Don't leave the bottles. Um, and then the last thing on this uh, patch note is the repair kits, they say, will now properly repair all weapons. I would assume that means the Magnum, possibly. I don't well, know. Well, and what I'm wondering which one that. it didn't because I, I can't think of a weapon other than maybe some melee weapon or something. Can you think of a weapon? Because they did fix the, the bows and the. The, the recurve bows, they fixed the crossbows to where they could be repaired. It must have I can't been something. think of another weapon that wasn't repairing I mean, correctly I mean, unless it was some sort of random melee weapon. Which realistically we never repaired anyway, so we, we would have really, really never known. Um, could you repair the fire axes? No. So I wonder if now those so, can be repaired. So perhaps the fire axe is now repairable. That could be the, the thing that they actually put in. Ah, see, look at I I knew something for once. There we go. Good job, Nick. All right, that's You're the show. A wealth folks. of information. Yeah, well, that's the show before it gets any worse. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a total wealth of information. Uh, right after the show last week, Brian, literally right yes. after the show, uh, this Imgur Within like 30 minutes of the show. <laughs> Not even 30 minutes. Uh, this Imgur album was posted, and it shows more pictures of the downtown cityscape um, yeah. that were leaked. So we're going to go into a few of these now. This first one we showed last week. Uh, which is just a bunch of buildings and uh, no models on those. So that's not a new picture. The second one is the picture that we showed. That we saw overhead. You know, yeah, which was like two or three ramp. weeks ago now, which which has got the elevated train and then just a few of the, the buildings. And you also, another thing to look at, there's light pole light poles in this. So power may be a thing on that as well. And then yeah, the I'm pretty sure it will be. third picture on here is shows traffic lights person sitting on the top and a bunch of zombies in the center so the, what's nice about the zombies is they kind of give you a per perspective of scale on this correct because before you look at the picture you can't really tell how big the buildings are um, here you can see with the with the zombies i mean these are pretty decent sized buildings out there the zombies do look pretty small compared to the buildings yeah this is a big city and there's there's even um stoplights and and like I mentioned, the the lamp posts or or the overhead. So if the lights. lamp posts work, why won't the stoplights work? Exactly. Are you now going to get a speeding ticket for? Uh, trying, <laughs> they'll, have, yeah, fly, they'll yeah. have the uh, the. the you go go into the whole red role, light cams. Go into the whole role play thing, Brian. This is this is a big thing now. You're going to have your police uh, officers pulling over the jeeps. <laughs> yeah, we'll have people in their with. police outfits pulling over people that go through red lights. <laughs> yeah, um, but so those are those are the three pictures, and you can find that over on our website as well. Everything besides the middle one are they're all nice high quality pictures, so you can really see what's going on. And um, and these these um, these things that they have in here are actually in the game files now. So as they start to add textures to them, we'll, we'll be able to pull those out and kind of show them in the stream as well. Yeah, we'll have the we'll have the latest for you. Uh, have no fear. Um, this is an interesting post I saw on Reddit, Brian. And uh, the whole premise is that the game is currently punishing. Uh, groups that use bases and the post yeah. and the post reads like this it says with the current system of not allowing people to close others doors it's extremely punishing to try and play with friends if the yeah. base owner isn't online uh it's easy to accidentally get a door stuck open i had two of our rooms open and uh, essentially they were running back and forth and their game crashed um the, those doors were still open when he logged back in and this is a problem that we have all of the time um, yeah. Just especially this last patch with the with the massive amount of crashing, you would open a door and just crash. Yeah. If someone goes opens the door crashes, then they have no ability to close that door because it resets their their ability that of knowing that they put in that code. It's like they're fresh coming but in. But the interesting uh, thing, and I'm going to stop you there for a second, Brian, because you say when it, they lose that, but their queue position is still saved and they're still in the squad. When they relog in within a certain but amount there's some of time. sort there's some sort of a countdown though of how long that is active so there it could be if they get in soon enough they could go in and, and reclose that door i don't think you can and that's that's the is it every thing time I noticed so it, it's weird this has been my experience maybe maybe this information isn't the best but the one time it happened to me when i left a door open i was still in the squad and i didn't have to wait because uh, now that we play on a high pop server we have a queue timer so i didn't have yeah. to wait for the queue timer i was still in the squad but i was not able to close the door yeah. So that's that's interesting. So this is something they're I, I 
I don't understand because it seems like it's such a simple fix for this. Yes. It, it seems like it'd simple. be something that, okay, just allow them to do this. You know, put that line of code in there and imagine how much of, of the current headache that we're having to deal with would go away. And I mean, we, we go back to this. Why not have a universal clan system where you invite members to your clan and they can always close doors or always place stuff on structures? I mean, that would just, that would solve this problem. Or just allow yeah. them to put in a code once the door is open. So, I mean, yeah, there, that's a, that they don't only have to allow it to where no matter what, where the door is open or closed, you allow, are allowed to put in and change the state of the door. If it's open, you have the ability to close it. If it's closed, you have the ability to open it regardless. There are, there are multiple ways that they could fix this. Mul multiple ways. And right yeah. now, they, they just haven't done that. So, um, th there I would hope that would be one of the next things. This has got to be the quality of life patch. I, I, I can't imagine how they wouldn't put this in the quality of life patch. You want to go into that then? So that's, uh, that's going to be next week. So the June 9th yeah. patch, which will be next Tuesday, um, is going to be a quality of life. And I hope, I hope it looks like the first quality of life, which was just a huge list, like a never-ending list of little stuff that they fixed. And, well, uh, and if, you, if you go on to the, the place where you can report these, the issue tracker, mm -hmm. there are a lot of issues that they have accepted and say, we recognize that these are issues in the game. Yeah. Uh, you know, these are things that we are looking, we will fix at some point. And I think that's where they're getting that list of quality of life patches. So I'm hoping that they take some of those because I've gone in and voted for the one like not being able to close the door. That is an issue that they recognize in the issue tracker. I've gone in and you can vote for those things. So I voted for that issue saying I would like to see this fixed first. Uh, I, so I would hope that this would be one of those things that they're actually putting in this. Yeah. Um, is, this, is this the second quality of life or the third? This is the second is quality the second. of life. Okay. I got a little they're confused. a month apart. So the, the first one was about a month ago. Yeah. So this is going to be interesting. There's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of little things that we've just gotten used to dealing with that I think are going to be fixed come next week. No. So th that's going to be the quality of life. And, there, and that, that's going to be really good. The, these, these are necessary for the game to fix these little issues. Very, very necessary. So right now, any new content that's in the game right now is pretty much all you're going to see for the next two weeks. Anything else is going to be added um, the week after. So you're going to have to wait two weeks for new content uh, besides that. But I appreciate that. I, oh, I, yeah. I'd rather see this quality of life patch and, and just see some of those things because we are the people who play a lot. We're the people who notice all these little things that just aggravate us. Some people only go play BR and they'll notice the BR bugs. But we're a group of people who play a lot in the standard mode on a PV, you know, PvP server we notice a lot of these bugs and some of them just make it to where you don't want to go either base build or you don't want to, there's certain things you don't want to do. Let's say right now with the crashing bug, you don't want to go drive a car. You don't, it, you don't it's really do impacting anything. how you play. You really don't want to do anything in game because you're, you're just risking losing whatever you have on you. And that's why honestly, a lot of our group members have just been running around with bows and arrows because yeah. if you crash out and you die, it doesn't really matter. Um, so that's a, that's a, I mean, there's just things they're going to have to fix there. Now, one thing we mentioned earlier was you know, yeah. the losing of corn. You know, that's one thing that yes. we've mentioned here. That seems to be like we were wanting to do some some fun, you know, like a pre-planned type of raiding activity um, after the the podcast today. But we can't because our corn has reset for the last however many days um, has been resetting constantly. So you can't actually gain up that amount. With the, with the constant crashes, you're not able to gain corn right now. So it seems like raiding isn't really happening with ethanol. Yeah. And, and essentially, and essentially we're gonna, we may have to wait till next week for this to be fixed. Yeah. So we may have a, I haven't heard any word. I mean, it may be that they'll put out a hot fix or they may wait till the quality of life patch. That, I mean, I mean, if, they, it, if, it's, if they can diminish it enough to where it's not totally breaking the game, you know, it's happening every half an hour, 45 minutes, people are crashing they may push it out. But if it keeps to where it's constant, you know, every 15 minutes for some people crashing out, I think they're going to have to put out a hot fix at some point. Well, it's been like that for a week and they haven't pushed out and they haven't pushed out a hot fix to our knowledge. So yeah. they, they may just let us suffer for another week. Um, but it, it's really, we, we have even, I mean, the active players on our group have, I think I've seen that go down this past week because it's yeah. just, people just are, our people are just frustrated. We have, we, there's, there was a few members in our group and I, I think Falcon was one of them. It was constantly crashing always crashing yeah. um me not so much and I, brian i don't think as much but falcon was always always crashing and for them yeah, it's I like only why crashed out a few times and me as well I, maybe three times total two maybe um 
so the, there's just there's many issues with that, and it's just turning a lot of people off from the game uh, as of right now. Well, and, and I'm assuming, like with the login thing, they had a bug where you couldn't log in earlier. Um, you know, some other people are saying that they're still having some issues logging in. Well, I don't even think it was so, a login bug. It was because they were doing Daybreak server maintenance. So no, it was before that. Like, oh, okay. There was, a, there was a period of time where people just were unable to log in, and okay. it was before they actually started the patch. So I, maybe it was something in preparation Interesting. Um, that was causing it during uh, what they weren't expect to be downtime. It seemed like there was some downtime of... Cause, I know that um, Falcon was actually in game running around and there was almost nobody else there. Perfect. Everyone else was sitting there trying to log in and they couldn't get in. So he had the server to himself. Yep. So he was just going around grabbing as many cars as possible. <laughs> Hoarding cars when you can. Um, yeah. So what, do you want to talk a little bit about this hardcore battle royale? I know there's a post that uh, I've yeah. linked in there, the official I mean, we H1Z1 little, page. We covered it a little bit. Um, so I don't um, know how much more we want it, to go into. We'll put the, we'll put the notes in there um, on the, the actual server uh, are on, on our post for about this episode. Yeah. But if you look at the bottom, mainly I wanted to show they have a new shirt. Yeah. Uh, the, um, for the, the winner, winner heart for the hardcore mode. Really low quality image. So good luck. I'm, I'm going to try my best to show this, but, uh, but, but yeah, we'll put, of course, with most of our listeners are audio listeners. So we'll have a link to this on the, uh, on the show notes and then also the new bag. So it's the hardcore BR it's the red bag, um, with a question mark on it. So, these will be things that you're starting to see other players wear. And I haven't seen the list. I'll have to go through and find what the new items that are in these red bags. There's six new items. That's all I know. I just, I don't have a picture of them yet or else okay. I would have put them on here. So, so that'll be interesting to see what those are. The interesting thing about this hardcore BR, Brian, is that only first place actually gets the reward, which is, mm -hmm. tip, which is, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it should still be like top two or three. I think one is, eh. I don't know. Well, you, okay, you don't get that reward, but on hardcore, I think in the top 10, don't you still get a regular bag? You do get a regular bag, but I think the top... Hardcore BR is really hard. Like, that second and third place person should still be rewarded very well. That's It's now not first, easy. First time I went in this, so for people that don't know, I mean, there's zombies in here. Mm -hmm. That's one thing we didn't mention. Yes. <laughs> you, you land, and then there's zombies. I remember the first time, I didn't realize that there were zombies. I forgot. I mean, I heard someone mention that there was going to be zombies. And I remember talking about it, but I wasn't thinking about it when I loaded. And I get on the ground, and all of a sudden, there's all these zombies everywhere. And that, that definitely. And first of all, I, I didn't have really, like we said before, I didn't really have ability to choose to not be around other people. So I'm instantly landed around other people. Then there's zombies everywhere. Um, it, I mean, it definitely makes it a lot harder. I, I think it's, it is a lot more fun sometimes but i think you hit your limit with it and you're like all right i gotta go play some regular br but i think it's good that they have this much of a variation between what is a normal br and then this hardcore br yeah um so from ferment saying he thinks the top five get the get a reward so yeah, it might be the mystery bag is top five the winner winner chicken dinner shirt is only for the top one now one other quick thing brian i don't know if you noticed this but i noticed this i only i played a few maybe five games of hardcore br the zombies are really dead giveaways of where other people are. You can use that to your advantage so much. Yeah. If you're sitting in a house, watch, looking out a window, and you just see a horde of zombies running in a direction, you just know to go out there and follow that direction, and you'll eventually find yeah. another player. So it, it's an interesting thing. It's, it's bad because they'll hurt you, but it also can be a, a, a positive because you're now, you, you almost can see where everybody else is if they're around you. Because the zombies well, are going to aggro. This will make an interesting dynamic when you can start getting those noisemakers to mm -hmm. where if you know someone's over there and you can throw a noisemaker in that direction at that person to where all the zombies will become attracted to where that person is. Yeah. Uh, that's a huge element that we haven't really even discussed. We discussed about, okay, you can you know, make zombies go away from you, but we haven't really discussed how you can also make zombies go towards your enemy. I mean, it, you think of a grenade as something you launch and the damage or the debilitating effect that we're talking about with the tear gas, those affect that other player immediately. But let's say someone runs into a house. What if you can just throw at the doors some of those noisemakers to where that person can't leave that house because you've covered both exits with, with noisemakers and zombies are just piling up outside the house. And then once those noisemakers die away, tons of zombies are around that house and they hear that person inside. So they have the choice of logging out or you know, trying to run out with them. So I don't know. I think that'd be a kind of a cool effect of, of some of the extra for me. It's, I guess that's role playing a little bit of kind of getting that realism of, of what zombies would do. Yeah. That's um, my nerdy, my nerdy perspective on yeah, it. Well, it. 
we keep going into how all of these things are eventually just going to layer on top of each other, and you're going to have this much it's more. It's all going to tie. Yeah, it's all going to tie. You're going to have together. this much more like dynamic game once all that stuff's implemented. Um, and those are the little details that people that are really into the game. I mean, people like that they know that much more about the game, and they, maybe they're better than that new person because they know all these little tricks. That's what gets people really interested is being able to do these sort of things. So you want to put, you don't want to make everything so simple or so basic that there's none of those tricks. You know, th these are the type of things that the people that are really good are able to pull out and use. Yeah. Now, uh, Brian, this is, I'm kind of, because the patch is so new while you're talking, I'm reading Reddit and seeing what's new and what people are talking about. This is a post that was made 37 minutes ago. This may be a one, one off thing. Um, but the post, it says, not sure if this is intended or not. But if you undo the placement of an upper level structure, the, the person that did this did not receive a shelter or materials in their inventory. So they, they were able to undo the shelter, but they didn't but get they any lose the materials back. Now, this is not, I'm not sure if this is just a one time thing where it's, it was buggy or if this is a all across the game issue. Um, yeah. but, nothing, but if that's the case, that's useless because you might as well just use a demo hammer if you're yeah. not going to get anything back. Um, and, that, and that sounds kind of like a bug to me. Yeah. I would assume usually when you undo, and I think with some of the other things that they've given you the ability to undo, you always get it back in your inventory. Of course. Yeah, so, that's the whole point. It's an undo. Yeah, exactly. As you, well, now, the ground, tam ground tamper was something that you, once you placed it, there's no option to take it back. Some of the other things you can use a demolition hammer on. Mm -hmm. So I totally understand. I'm fine. If something is, is not a thing I can remove after I place it, I guess you, you got to look at the benefit of, all right, I don't have to deal with that now. So me being able to remove it, I'll live with losing the, the materials. But with something that you could take a dem demo hammer to, you but might as well get the materials you have to back. Get, yeah. And, and the fact that it's saying undo, I mean, you would think, all right, you undo the placement, you get it back. I mean, it's an undo. It's a control Z. You yeah. And you, you definitely have the inventory space because you're placing it out of your inventory. So yeah. that, that's got to be something new. I'm assuming they're going to be fixing. Uh, now, something interesting. Um, this is... Tweet, this is a retweet from the H1Z1, and it shows the bug. It's, I don't even know if you'd call this a bug, um, but the, the male player head is appearing on the female body, and this is a, a funny compilation of pictures here uh, yeah. on, on Twitter. I mean, it's just horrible. Uh, Ferment's got it. He was... Uh, he, but he's that's one of probably how Ferment really looks. I don't well, know. It's, I mean, it's possible. Um, but here's this is the female body... And, and and in this second picture right here, you can see the like the over like lapping necks. Like there's like three necks there. Uh, it, it's it's bad. It looks awful. <laughs> so you just put a helmet on. Essentially, is how you how you combat this problem. Or delete, it's a man face. Or you delete your character. Um, so <laughs> now this okay. So there are there are two new faces. There's this one that's just horrible, um, and that's the male face on the female head. Uh, but then there's also this new male face that it looks like he looks like he's had facial burns. Like he looks kind of like a burn victim. If you look like the, the way that the texture of the skin lays out on his face isn't quite right. Yeah. And it, just, it doesn't look good as well. So I think they're going to definitely have to do some smoothing out. They're going to have to get rid of the, uh, the male faces, female heads. And, and there's just because it really I mean, I run around the BR area and I look at people and I just say, man, you are ugly. It's, it's that's all I think when I when I run in it's, there. I'm it's like, very that person odd. is it's really a, ugly. It's a very like how did they screw that up? Like yeah, female like just female body, female head. I've heard so many body, uh, Bruce Jenner jokes. Yeah, that was the first this, tweet. The, this week, I mean, the first talk about timing. The first tweet on here was just Bruce Jenner, but um, yeah. Going to this next thing, Brian. This is a new item, possibly. This is something that we that that was uh, that was found by one of our possibly new item, but also possibly a test item. Yeah, so let's. Because uh, I think I've seen, I possibly have seen some of these in some of their test things that they've done on, in their little sandbox. So what is this thing, Brian? And what would be the use of this thing if it was actually in the game? So this, I mean, it's pretty much a shooting target. So I'm assuming th that this is something that they're using to gauge the amount of spread from different ranges. Okay. This, but this would be excellent in game. Um, you know, a, a daybreak, if you're listening for people to be able to, to get better at their shooting skills, if you could place this um, somewhere outside of your base and then, and you could shoot at these and it'll have them be something that maybe that lasts a week or something, mm -hmm. whatever. But if you could make it to where this is something that you could go out there and it actually leaves a mark on there for a period of time when you shoot at it. So you can go and see how far off you are on a shot. 
Yeah. So Maybe even with just pistols. I mean, it'd help you to realize how much spread from different distances there are so you could get better at your shot. Yeah, we'll have to see. I, I almost feel like I've seen this in some of the tweets that they've made as well when it's in that, like, checkered, like, skybox thing that they just have a bunch of items laid out in. Um, yeah. So... Yeah, and, That's and, what I'm saying. I, I think I've kind of seen them, but I've never seen them in the regular game that I know of. So I'm kind of hoping that this is something because we have talked about this before, having some sort of a, a target in yeah. there that you can shoot at and practice with. Because calculating yeah. calculating drop, I mean, we're, we're lucky that we they got, change it too. And I mean, it's, it's something that changes it with patches. We've got a few members in our group that are really good shots with with the 308. That kind of I, I want to say this is too like hardcore but they like mentor other people They're like oh, all right so this is where you should be aiming and you know they're helping out members that, like for me I, i'm an awful shot with the 308 but i had a few people that were really good in our group kind of explain to me what the drop and and where i should be aiming the target would mean i could just do this by myself we would just have yeah. the target somewhere near our base and i could just unload a clip or two of 308 trying to figure out where i need to be shooting yeah so um so this is where i think someone uh whitetail actually has said in chat you know, this would be excellent if they can make some sort of a, a shooting gallery, uh, some sort of a, a training area that the policemen may have used down in PV. Because there's a, a, a open, empty area behind the police station that they could easily turn into a shooting gallery. Yeah, yeah, a range. Yeah, just make a shooting range that you could go in there. And, and this would be, you know, this would be a variation of what's in there. Um, but let you go in there. And if, if you can hold it down, I mean, it'd be a high area of contention. But if you could go in there and have people kind of watch your back, you could sit there and work on your shooting. Yeah. Maybe it'd be a high spawn rate for ammo as well. Because, I mean, in a exactly. shooting range, you would think there would be ammo. So and we'll have to see. Uh, but I do feel like this has been, this is, I've seen this in tweets before. So this may not be anything. But it was just something yeah. that somebody, they forward, it was forwarded to us by one of our clan members. And we decided we'd bring it up on the show. So I have, personally, I've never seen that render outside of those screenshots though. So I think that th this is a, it's the first time we're seeing a, like an up close, high quality version of it as well. Um, Brian, you want to do the clan spotlight next? We've got uh, we've got that set up or we can roll with a few more uh, notes on here. Um, let's go ahead and let's throw in the clan spotlight and then we will go to maybe the June 9th roadmap. Yeah. So the clan spotlight is an interesting segment that we do uh, every week. Uh, we, we talk to a clan member. A lot, a lot of you here on the podcast that we're bringing up clan members, uh, we're bringing up names, Ferment, Anguish, uh, names like that, Falcon. And, you know, who are these people? What, what are they doing? And, and get a little background on them. So this is the Clan Spotlight. Hey everyone and welcome to the Clan Spotlight. This is an opportunity for you, the viewers, to get to know members of the Infection Clan. Joining me today for the Clan Spotlight is Cameron Falcon, also known in-game as Darius. What's going on, Darius? How's it going, man? My first question would be, where are you from? Uh, I live in southern Louisiana, United States. How would you say you originally found the podcast or the Infection Clan? I originally found the podcast through one of our other clan members, uh, Kramit. I gamed with him earlier in a different group and he moved here I still wanted to play the game but the group that I originally played with stopped playing it as much so I followed him to infection so Darius you are a recruited member to our group more or less yeah like I knew like Kramit I knew Musty I knew Sub all before this like I we all came from the same group alrighty there we go do you have a day job Darius I do um other than being a student when the semesters are in, uh, I am a waiter. What kind of restaurant? Um, it's more a rotisserie and grill type of restaurant. And you said when uh, you're not in school, what are you currently going to school for? Uh, I'm going for a degree in electrical engineering. Getting back to more clan stuff, what would you say your most memorable moment is with the Infection Clan? It was, uh, I think it was like me, Kramit, and Subspace. We were all riding around on one of our old servers that we used to play on. In a, in a Jeep. We were up north by Zim's when a group of, like, Chinese, Asian, I mean, they were Asian, that's as far as I know, uh, came up behind us in a cop car and just started screaming at us and all this kind of stuff. Well, they chased us for, like, ten minutes straight, just around Zim's. Well, eventually we pulled up on the side of them and we're like, hey, do you want a drag race? 
we're in a Jeep, they're in a cop car, obviously they're faster than us. And we were pointed towards the tunnel. So I counted down, and as I was counting down, I was telling Kramit, who was driving at the time, in uh, TeamSpeak, to when I say go, floor it, reverse, turn around, and turbo the other way. And when we did that, all you did was like hear them screaming like crazy, like they didn't know what happened, and we just shot out of there as fast as we could. Other than H1Z1, Darius, what other games do you play online? Right now, H1Z1 is the only real game that I play. I'm big on. Uh, I played a little bit of Gary's Mod and Rust back in the day. Uh, I first got my PC gaming uh, into on Elder Scrolls online. That was where I first started mostly. Are you a transition to console player, or was PC gaming your first step into like really hardcore gaming? No, I came from console. I grew up playing consoles. Um, but I never had the ability to have a PC that could play well. But now that I work myself, I paid for it myself. So I was able to get something good, something nice. There's one thing you have to tell the viewers right now. What would you say your most interesting fact about you or, or just something interesting that you can let our audience in on? Not everybody believes this when I tell them, but I am actually related to Captain Morgan, the pirate. The pirate. And not that far down the line. Captain Morgan the Pirate. Yes, like the actual legitimate pirate that lived back in the day. All right, thank you, Darius, for being part of the Clan Spotlight. It's a pleasure. If you want to be part of our next Clan Spotlight, go to our website, infectionpodcast.com. Go to Clan, Clan Spotlight, and fill out the application. There we go. I, thought, I always enjoy those. The, the, the Captain Morgan thing. I was like, what? Like, the legitimate <laughs> Captain Morgan the pirate. I, I still don't know if I believe him. But, well, well, well there we go. So that was uh, Darius on the clan spotlight. So um, th that was fun. I, 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 I enjoyed that clan spotlight. It was a lot of fun to do. So that's, and that's where you're going to have to really <laughs> encourage people. If you want to be a part of the clan spotlight, make sure you get a hold of us. Um, we get actually a lot of people that listen to the podcast, but they're not, and we'll have to discuss this, what we want to do, but there's people that are not in our clan. They're actually in other clans, but they listen to the podcast faithfully. So I've been thinking of a segment either where we could interview clan leaders of other clans uh -huh. and get to know some of the other clans across other servers, or, um, have an opportunity maybe to have people that listen to the show, you know, like a listener spotlight. Yeah, it's cool. It's, you know, it's, it's interesting to... You know, Whenever I talk to Darius, and this is, I mean, it's a learning experience for, for me as well doing the interview. I talk to Darius, and it's about H1Z1. And to find out that he's going to school for electrical engineering and, and you know, stuff like that, it, it's just it's a little peek into, into somebody else's life. So uh, that's the Clan Spotlight. And, of course, you can be part of that, like I said, in the, in the interview. It's infectionpodcast.com. Go to the Clans uh, drop down, click on Clan Spotlight, fill out the application. And uh, if you're active, it, it's essentially if you're on TeamSpeak at the right time, We'll, uh, or, or we'll try to set up a date and time with you, and uh, we can do that. A call-in segment, nope. probably not so much. We've got, we've got too many... We did discuss that, possibly, on uh, Saturday, yeah. not during the regular show. We've got way too many the, the, uh, funny guys in our groups that would make... We've way too many people that are <laughs> loose cannons. <laughs> yes, that would make the call-in segment a lot of editing after the fact, and, and not a lot of fun to do. Uh, it'd be fun, <laughs> but just a lot of editing. Uh, a lot of time invested into doing it. It would be fun to be outside of the show where it's not going to go on our regular, our, our regular uh, no, podcast. Our, stream. Rep our reputation will be tarnished <laughs> by. Uh, the These are the type show. of guys that we hang out with. Yeah. I'm sorry. Don't come, don't don't join our team. <laughs> speak, um, Brian. We were unable to do this segment really last week because of the uh, or two weeks ago because of the wipe that was happening during it, um, or, or the server update that was happening during it. But talk about players versus last week. And uh, this is this is what we're looking at right now. So currently, as we speak, there's 8,623 people online, and today's yeah. high, or the 24-hour high peak was 10,209 players. Yeah, that 8,000 is very low. Yeah, we were looking at what 14,000 a couple weeks ago. Yes, Go, scrolling down on this chart a little bit, you can even see this weekend um, they hit almost 13,000, and that was on the 31st. Um, so that was Sunday, but th like they were, there was you know points where there were fourteen thousand uh, last week. That that is a very concerning number. 
8,623 people. It's yeah. eight thir- it's it's past eight o'clock Eastern. That's a now, very concerning number. Now, looking at these, I, I try to think of okay, what's also affecting these numbers? Okay. Uh, a lot of people are playing that Ark Survival game. Okay. Um, you know, that's one thing where certain releases really affect the numbers. So you, we had GTA Five at one point. Um, we have Ark Survival that that is out now uh, for some people to be able to access. And that really does, you wouldn't think it would, but it actually affects the numbers quite a bit uh, as far as what people are playing. Some of these games will stick, some of them won't. Um, you know, GTA, some people will play it for a period of time and then they just totally stop. This mm-hmm. game, there are a lot of people who play it. You know, For us, we've stuck around our group of people. They sit there and they play it pretty consistently. It's not like they go from game to game to game. Um, but I, I would think that some of these games like Ark, it, it may be a game that people play for a week or two weeks and then they may, may move on and come back to play games like this. So it's kind of hard to gauge, you know, next week are we going to be seeing the same trend? It may be 8,000 today and it may be that next week we're back at 14,000. Uh, it's really hard to judge. Yeah. Um, so we'll keep an eye on this and we'll bring this up to you every week. And like Brian said, there are factors. This is not just like the, the same variables every week. So there, there are different yeah. factors that come into it. But that's, that's low. Um, earlier bef- before the show, I want to say around 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock Eastern, there were 10,000 people playing. So I don't know why like 1,500 people got off. Um, but, yeah. but they did. Maybe, maybe there was a, well, a, a crash. Well, I, I mean, I'm one thing sure. you could look at is, is, for instance, Ark Survival is being released today. Um, I think it's because of the know. podcast, Brian. The podcast starts and a lot of people turn off the game so they can come watch the show. I really think okay, that's what well, it is. Okay, well, yeah, that could be a, another possibility. <laughs> but the fact that they just made it so that you could actually download and buy Ark Survival now, and that is a possibility of why from earlier today to now there is such a drop because a lot, a lot of the same type of people, um, you know, we, are, we know 30, in my friends list, I already know 23 people that have bought Ark Survival. It's been out one day. It just came out like hours oh, ago. Okay, there you go. So that's what I'm saying is that could be why now the numbers versus earlier today versus now you're seeing a drop. So it's not necessarily fair that right now, because we're measuring the 8,000 at this moment, when a game that is a very similar genre that pulls a lot of the same audience just re- just opened the gates on it. Yeah, and I think even uh, H1Z1 tweeted to, to Arc Survival earlier today. I think I saw that tweet. I yeah, I mean, it's like early welcome. access, uh, survival yeah. genre. I mean, it could be really cool. I, it's hard to say. I mean, it could be a really awesome game. Uh, it just, but some of them, I mean, you could look at Elder Scrolls, or what was it? Um, not Elder Scrolls. Um, the Skyrim Online. Uh, what's the one that they did? Elder Scrolls that, Online? It was on Elder Scrolls Online. It's the sure new one. That, one talking about. That, that one pretty much tanked, right? A lot of people had high expectations of it. I, yeah, I guess so. I'm not sure. I wasn't an Elder I, I, Scrolls person. I'm sorry. You're sorry. asking, you're asking uh, like you're asking like the wrong guy about Skyrim and <laughs> Elder Scrolls. But stuff. but that was one where I was like, man, you know, it was the pretty much a Skyrim online, and you were thinking, man, this could be really cool. Um, you you take a look, and then once you got into the actual gameplay, it just it just didn't hold on to you. So I think if you t- take a game like this, you know, a lot of people there's not as good of graphics in H1Z1. Um, you know, there are a lot, there are plenty of bugs, but something about the type of gameplay and, and what it brings back, you know, up in you of, of just hunting down that person or, or being hunted, um, losing everything that attracts a certain genre of people. If this doesn't have either that, that, you know, that exhilarating rush of when you're playing it, if something happening, I don't think they're going to hold on to those people. Yeah. I'm or not- there could be a million bugs that just make it un- unplayable. Or it could just be you run around and it's like, okay, what do I do now? I, you know, I've got a dinosaur that I, I can ride. What do I do now? <laughs> Brian, I'm going to need access to the Infection Podcast uh, bank account so I can purchase the game after the show <laughs> so I can play that. Um, yeah, this, this game looks but, interesting. But we'll see. I mean, not to, this isn't uh, Ark Survival, the, the podcast. but The Ark the, Survival <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I'm just, you know, that's, that's something that, that I think is important to discuss. You yeah. know, games like this come out, and those do play into the numbers. Oh, well, um, let's see. But they may not be long-term effects. We may be able to see how many people are playing Ark Survival right now. Let's take a look. I have... I, I'm not sure how many people are actually playing it at the moment, but I know that quite a few of them actually have it. So um, let's see. I don't think it has. I mean, that. I have I have a list. Well, I, I could actually tell you. It like does. on my friends list, 
there are two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven people playing it right now. There are actually thirteen thousand people playing it right now. So that so may that, have I mean that, there you go. There's there's a lot of your numbers of people that would be playing this game, or maybe even own H one Z one. Yeah, and have have taken a break from it, and they're playing this game yeah, for I mean, a while. The the people on right now is their peak. 24 hour total so there are more people playing the game right now that well it was just really i mean there yeah, were exactly. some people with early access so they're so they're hitting their peak as of right now so the most amount of people are playing as we speak and, um, and out of all my friends the people that are playing it are all people that i played h1z1 with interesting so that 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 may have something to do with that number so thirteen thousand people playing arc survival right now less than nine thousand on h1z1 so just it's just something we keep rolling back to every week. It's, I think it's something that we should, be, we should consistently be talking about. Because eventually, H1Z1 is going to need to see that spike where they're consistently at 15,000 players. No matter what. Yeah. No matter what game comes out, they need to be up that high. So that's, uh, that's stats versus uh, last week or whatever else. Um, so do you want to go into the roadmap here of what's coming yes. up? I, I, so though that was the quality of life patch. The roadmap is yeah. just the quality of life patch. Mm -hmm. We already covered that. Um, the and then the, the, we did have some new content though that I did want to share. Yeah. That isn't isn't probably not going to be out for what a couple weeks. I would imagine so. So they've got this police vest, and you have a link to it in there. I do, and we can show that we're showing this right now. So if you want to roll with this, Brian. All right. So this is going to be, uh, and we have a, another one that we rendered, but this is one that they haven't actually put out in the game files that I think looks better. Uh, than the copy we have, but this is from Sebastian. So he is one of their uh, graphics designers at uh, at the H1Z1 team, and he put this out. This is a like a Kevlar type of a vest, um, some sort of a bulletproof vest that you can put on. Um, it'll be interesting because I would assume it would just stop body shots. So you have your helmet, which stops headshots for the most part, unless they shoot you in the face. Um, this is going to stop some of those body shot damage. Uh, maybe you know makes it that a shotgun doesn't quite do much so much damage uh, up close, but I think like this picture looks pretty good from the low res far away. Uh, but one thing that we keep running into is these pictures. When you look up close, like the the one that's in game right now, that's more of the generic one. It's 512 pixels by 512 pixels. Yes, textures. It's terrible, and and, and that's just quality wise. You're not going to get something that up close looks good with that type of a texture. Yeah, they're, they're, they're making a lot of, and, and this is, I guess you could classify this as a rant, but they're implementing textures into the game that are off the bat really, really low quality. Like, just spend the extra time and delay it and make the quality, um, I'm, I'm trying to get the picture here. I uh, mean, we, we keep going, like, this is a first pass. Uh, you know, this is first pass, so we understand. I mean, I get it. But, but, but still, like, you could put a little extra time into it, knowing we know that there's going to be this type of police armor yeah. in the game. I mean, it's not like this is a let's test and see if people want this. Mm -hmm. People want this. It will be in the game. Why not take a little extra time and put out a little higher, higher quality render of this? Yeah, and, that, and that's really what it comes down to is, like, just spend the extra time. Like, it's fine that, that, it, that maybe it's gone, maybe it's delayed by a week or two weeks. But, you know, like, put the time into it and... And here's the screenshot, um, and it, it looks like crap. I wasn't going to show it, but that's what it looks like. The, you can the, see uh, the ones that are actually in the asset files. Yeah, so the actual I mean, game you can files see, right now. you can see the you can see the you can see the detail on the rendered person. You can see the facial hair and, and the five o'clock shadow, and then you've got this really low quality, like pixely vest. That, that that's dubbed on this. So and it's got like it's got the Velcro. It's got like a place for Velcro to where you can strap on, uh, you know, like the police name tag and stuff. This is pretty much the top one of the two pictures. Yeah, it looks like garbage. It's simple but as it, that. It looks different than the one. That's the thing is is the one that they put in the game files looks lower quality than the one that he posted. On t so I'm not sure why they put the low quality ones in the game file, but I've got the the PNG. I mean, I would assume it to save space, possibly. The PNG that is, or, or the image that is wrapped, or the JPEG that is wrapped around that model, uh, was also sent to me, and that's 512 by 512 pixels. That's yeah. the size. So. So uh, I mean, they could be just exporting files since maybe they have a lot. They do have a lot of junk files in the asset files that aren't actual, actually real things. But assuming what they're doing is putting in low quality versions just to save space so the patches are smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe later, once they get to a closer to a final release and get rid of content that they're not actually going to use and get narrowed down to what content they will use, 
then they're going to put out these high quality uh, versions of the files. I hope that's what they're doing. Yeah. Um, so we've got, I'm not going to play the breaking news sound effect. I, I think I overused it last week. Um, <laughs> but, but Legion CM just posted on Reddit. Uh, in, and the post is, what are your top issues? Uh, and he's saying that they're, you know, they're trying to squash bugs and make the game better. And he's this is probably in in preparation you know, for next preparation week. for that quality of life patch. Uh, so there's a whole thread on here, and I'll copy this and we'll throw it in the show notes, and you can read through this. We're not going to go into them on air. There's just there's too much to look through right now. Um, but if you've got a problem, uh, and, and and the the thing he says is he goes, don't write. Um, Hackers. Fix fix your damn zombies. Lol 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 lol. That doesn't really help us much. So, you know. Yeah. Get your point out there. Write write a paragraph if you need to, to to get to to explain your problem. Um, yeah. So that's uh that's in there now, and we'll have that in the show notes as well, so anybody can check that out. And if you have a legitimate concern, uh, you can go ahead and throw that in there. Yeah. So that's one thing they're going to have to uh, to look at, and, and that's the frustrating thing is they get so many issues thrown at them, and then they have to sift through all this stuff. So. I hope that people do take the time to really look at, hey, what is what is the top issue here? Like the doors that we keep bringing up. Um, people need to, to very clearly say, hey, this is very important for the clan. This is very important for players that like to build things. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a very game-breaking bug. You know, it may not seem like it to people that play BR, but this is a game-breaking bug for us. Please fix it in the quality of life. And come at them like that. Don't say, you know, you guys destroyed the buildings. You know, we hate you. It just, <laughs> that's not going to get anywhere with them. Um, just come at them and say, hey, here's the problem we're experiencing. Come at them very clear and concise and explain it. And that, that almost guaranteed will work for them to get, be able to get that into the patch. Because that's what I'd like to see fixed. For me, that's one of the most important issues that I keep seeing. Yeah, actually, one of the big, one of the issues... Now, for Falcon, is the, the crops. Yeah, um, <laughs> this is actually a funny issue right here. I'm just, as you were talking, I was skimming through these posts. Apparently, if you change key bindings for interacting objects, it only uses the key bind in first person. So there's a, a picture here. He changed his open interact key to D. So when he's mm -hmm. in first person, it says D to open. And when he's in third person, it says E to open. So oh, that, so they that's must, a, it must be their locale file or something they're using that's supposed to pull in that. that. that so that's a, the, there's just there's issues in here. So like the, there's a lot of good posts on here already that are like bulleted out, a bunch of different things, clear descriptions, uh, and... You know, go ahead and read through those. There's a lot of comments on here already. Well, one thing you could go do is go to that that Daybreak uh, issue tracker. Issue tracker. Look at some of the top issues on there. Kind of figure out which ones are the most important to you, uh, and and you could go and vote for those. I mentioned it earlier. You can vote for them, but also you could take your top issue. Once you see, all right, here's the issues. Because sometimes you have an issue that you deal with and you kind of forget about it. But take that top issue that you're like, ah, oh, you know, this is something I've been dealing with. If you find that one that really hits home for you, like for Falcon, it's the crops. You know, mm -hmm. for me, it's the doors. If for you, it might be something else. Take that issue and mention it in this thread or uh, upvote whatever one person that has mentioned that in the thread. You don't have to keep uh, saying the same thing over and over again. But if enough people go in and upvote certain topics that are brought up, like the doors or the crops, those are going to be noticed by Daybreak. So that would be one really good way to get your actual vote made then it's not going to get lost in the issue tracker. Yeah, exactly. Getting your, getting your point across. So uh, you can do that, and that's over there on Reddit, which they're still using, surprisingly. They're still falling back on Reddit. I'm not sure why. After all the, all the garbage on Reddit, they're still falling back. Man, they, they got thick skin. <laughs> I, I know. They, they, They've been dealing with it. They have been. Um, let's see. What so else do we do have you, here? Well, do you want to go into Tips of the Week? I guess so. Um, so, Brian, what is Tips of the Week really quickly for our – for anybody that's right. new. So tips of the week is where I have an opportunity to go through and for people that are beginners in the game, just give them a chance to learn some new things that maybe they haven't even thought about. Uh, you know, for, for some people, we kind of forget having played this game a whole bunch that maybe knowing that you can go pick berries and survive off of berries is, is you know, is something that you have to be told. Not everybody knows to run around and pick up berries. Um, so tips like that are, are things for the, the more beginner user. But also there's some advanced things that people have been playing for a while. It's not necessarily mentioned on Reddit. It's not, necess not necessarily mentioned in their, their notes that some of these things are in the game. So we try to find some of those more advanced tips of things that you can use uh, to, to your advantage inside of the game. So let's do tips of the week.
All right, so for this week's beginner tip, this was something that is, is kind of an advanced tip, but it be, can be used at any point. You don't have to have um, a huge amount of gear or anything to use this tip. It's something that immediately from spawn point, you have the ability to use this tip. So I thought I would keep it in the beginner tip because it's something that you don't usually notice, but it can be really a helpful thing in game. On your, your numpad, so the, the numpad on the right-hand side of your keyboard, it has different uses than the numbers at the top of your screen. And a lot of the things it has to do with are the in-game voice chat. So when you are playing and someone, let's say in the, in the beginning BR area, for, for instance, is incredibly loud, or maybe someone is next to you, like you have someone come up to your base and die and they're just sitting there playing really loud music, and you want to be able to turn that person down, or maybe someone in game is quieter than the rest of the people and you want to be able to turn that person up. You can use the plus and minus keys on your numpad to be able to turn up and down the volume of that player and it will actually remember that player. It doesn't um, just go away. So when you come back to that player later, maybe another day, run into the same person, um, let's say they were really annoying and you don't want to hear what they have to say, it will remember that you like them quiet or if it's someone that maybe has a quieter microphone, uh, it will remember that you need to have them louder. So use the plus and minus on your, key, on your numpad keyboard um, area to be able to turn people up and down. And then let's say, for instance, you want to mute someone totally. Uh, you want it to where no matter what, that person doesn't even show up on the, right, on the left-hand side as a person that's talking. Hit the enter key on that numpad. That will mute the person that is um, talking currently in game so that you don't have to hear them ever again. Uh, I guess what I could go through in a more advanced tip is how to actually remove those people from that list. So let's say you mute people or, or adjust people's volume that you don't want to. There's a way, but we'll save that for an advanced tip later. So for this week's advanced tip, this is something fairly new. Um, let's say you're in a squad. We've gone through advanced tips before where you could go through and um, add people to a squad so that their names appear differently in game and as well you can see them from farther distances away. Well now if you press the one on your numpad you're actually able to talk in an in-game voice chat that is only to your squad members. So right now your middle mouse button lets you talk to people that are around you. But if you were to press the number one on your numpad that talks to your squad only. So it's a way that you can have an in-game voice chat. Maybe you're with some people that you don't want to give your team speak to. Let's say you're in a, B, uh, we can't really do it in a BR, but let's say you're in a group that you don't want to tell them what your team speak is. Maybe you're not sure whether or not you should trust them yet. You can join up in a quick squad with, squad with them and then talk in the in-game voice chat to be able to keep that communication going without having people that aren't in your squad overhearing you. Because that's a big thing you run into is people that, that when you talk in the in-game voice chat, and everyone can hear you. Um, I don't know whether or not later they're going to make it so that the in-game voice chat actually aggro zombies. Maybe the, the uh, squad chat won't. We'll see how that comes out. But this is a good way to be able to talk in-game if you don't have team speak or you're with people who don't have access to voice chat. So that is our beginner and advanced tips of the week. All right. Thanks for that, Brian. And uh, yeah, I think that, that the one thing of the squad chat, that was something I was kind of surprised about because I didn't realize that was in there and someone mentioned it. And I think this is a, possibly a carryover from you know some of their other games of being able to do this because I didn't see them announce this anywhere that yeah. this was actually being released. So yeah, I think they kind of snuck that one in. I th we, somebody, I think, accidentally in our squad accidentally pressed it. And we were like, yeah, hey, and I, heard, working. I heard you from E7 getting killed or something like that. They, they and were, it's not, yeah, that's the thing is it's not within a certain range. It's all across your squad. Yeah, so. it, it, it's anyone in the squad. So it's kind of like, a, I guess it's kind of like the walkie talkies. Maybe this is um, them testing code for the walkie talkies and radios. See, the interesting thing is we've already got a system kind of set up for this. In our team speak, we have this thing called officers where we can have people in multiple, I mean, the really, this and, is- And channel commanders, yeah. And this, and this is useful for, uh, it's useful for people in squads in general, but it's useful for clans where you've got multiple groups doing two different things at the same time. So. You know, if Brian's up with the group up north and I'm with the group down south, I can say, you know, hold down the one key and say, hey, Brian, you know, where are you guys at? What's up? And then we can, you know, talk in the squad that way and do that. But we've already got a TeamSpeak thing set up for that, uh, which makes that. Not everybody, ha not everybody exactly. has access to that. So, so this so is something nice. nice that they'll be able to yeah. use. And the problem is it's a little spammy. A lot of people just tend to press it because they can. So, 
Um, it would be nice if the officer could disable or the leader could disable that. Yeah, that would be a nice feature to say, you know, I don't want this chat on. And being that they kind of snuck it in here, I don't think that they're necessarily they're not expecting people to know about this quite yet. So it's something you can take advantage of. But I'm assuming it's kind of testing. So it may, who knows, maybe things will change in the next week or two weeks as they kind of play with it. You know, but for now, this is something you can use. We'll have to see. Uh, because there's a lot of, I mean, Brian, I think you're more on point with saying this is probably the first pass of the walkie-talkie system. Because I mean, that's, that's, what I, that's my a, guess. This is essentially what the walkie-talkie system is going to be, except you're and, probably and just going to need there's one. Ne- yeah, I mean, and then what would be the point of walkie-talkies if you can continue to do this? Yeah, it, exactly. The only benefit would be you could talk to people outside your squad. And it goes. At the it end. has to go. It, that's you, what I, I. It's not a walkie-talkie if I don't hear that. Yeah, you have to the the squelch going off or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Over and out, Roger. Roger that ten four. Yeah, there you What's go. What's your ten eight ten ten? <laughs> well, well, would you like to explain that, Brian? Go ahead. What's your okay? What, what does that mean? Go so ahead. So ten eight was okay. So the one of them is what I gotta remember this because I used to do CB radios. So ten eight. Of course you um, did. One's your location. Um, or your ten. What's your twenty? Is your location? Um, I'm gonna be ten eight, which means I'm gonna be off the air. Um, I just remember it, and then. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop broadcasting, is is one of those. So I have to remember. I don't remember them off the top of my head. Ah, there you go. Um, whoop. Uh, hey. Um, so there's the um, that that's the or that I don't know. They're gonna have to figure out what they're gonna do with this system. It, it's useful, yes, but like Brian said, if their walkie talkies aren't implemented, or if the walkie talkies are implemented, then what's the use of this system? Yeah, it, it becomes pointless that that the walkie talkies become pointless at that you know at the, when that's implemented. So I, they're going to have to disable this because this is a walkie talkie yeah. in, in squad, and you don't actually have to have a walkie talkie. So I'm assuming they're going to turn that off, and you have to have the walkie talkie in your inventory to be able to use it, or who knows. But then your whole squad has to have it. I don't know. It's going to be kind of a weird situation. Yeah, maybe they'll keep the squad chat and just have it so that you can talk to other people maybe like the squad leaders have them i don't know what they're gonna do it just seemed like it was weird they just threw this in randomly yeah um what else do we have here? now we have our weekly contest i'm gonna go kind of quickly into what this is yeah Um, first of all we have our list of games and for a contest what you can do is send in a list of or send in uh, links to videos that you enjoy, um, that are funny, that you've made, um, that are some form of entertaining. And they don't have to be necessarily funny, but they do, do need to be entertaining. So um, this is a link to the spreadsheet that has all of the games that you can win. Um, and then also we have these H1Z1 stickers. So these stickers are um, provided to us by Landgun. Um, and we're going to be hopefully getting some more ones with the podcast, and, and uh, these ones are the actual H1Z1 logo. Uh, maybe later also we'll be able to get some swag from Daybreak. We'll keep asking them. One day. Um, one day. One day we'll get some swag uh, that we can give out to listeners of the show. So, uh, But go ahead and check out that spreadsheet that has all the different games. You can pick one of those games. Um, last week I think it was Nisco, um, if I remember correctly, that won. And he picked out a game. Did you just but, take uh, it off the list, or did you make it red, or what are we doing with that? No, I just I just deleted it. Oh, okay, so, so it's not as even they option. go away. I mean, I, I don't care. You know, you, we'll just delete them off the list so they're no longer listed on there. Okay. But that but that is a list of games. There's still seventy, about seventy games. Um, and then yeah, these are these will work on the car. These are weatherproof stickers, um, as far as the bumper stickers. So you can put those on there. Um, and so for this week. We have a video from Dan, um, and he's the winner of this this week's contest. So, do you want to go and play that for us? Yeah, let's do it. Here we go. You dying? Yeah. You dead? No. Anyone help? Oh my god! Whoa! Oh my god. Having that <laughs> shot, mate! <laughs> I'm gonna die! Where's my bandages? <laughs> Jesus Christ! I just totally no scope this guy. 
Yeah, so that's a that that's the video. He just gets this crazy. Those, those are the story. kind of shots that you just dream for. It's the shot that you're not even like you're like, oh well, I'm gonna be dead here anyway. But you still shoot, and like that's you just the take it. it and, <laughs> yeah. and who knows? It's kind of like that that reaction that you know that. <laughs> Yeah, who knows if you've been meant to do it? Yeah, he just like he just spam clicked it because it was just like yeah, yeah but gonna, it was an amazing shot, and, he, and you know he caught himself off guard. It's one of those ones where if you're running, you know, we talked about running something um, like Raptor or you know to be able to record your gameplay. This is one of those moments where you're like, oh, I got to save this. So we'll be I'll be contacting him. Um, we'll get him a copy of a sticker and we will get him to pick out one of his games and for next week if you want to be included in the contest if you're not chosen if you've already sent in a video um, and you haven't been chosen to win the contest yet you can uh, keep sending in new videos because we'll take your previous videos that you have already submitted and we will roll those forward to be in the future contest so keep coming up with new content sending us in videos and you'll be included in this this ongoing contest that we have uh, and make sure you send those links to contact at infectionpodcast.com. Um, if you want it to be a surprise for people, you don't have to uh, link it publicly. Um, you can give us a private link to the video and then uh, maybe afterwards you can put a public, uh, but we'll put the link to that video in our show notes and congratulations to Dan for winning this week's contest. Yeah. Now the key here is Brian, a lot of people sometimes send you them on steam but mm-hmm. send it to the email contact at infectionpodcast.com. Brian and I both have access to that email because I'm the one that plays the video on the show. So if you send it to Brian on Steam, he's got to forward it to me. It's a lot and easier. And then also make sure that it's about a minute. We have some great videos that are longer. And so for some people, I, I've told them, hey, can you shorten this down some? Yeah. Because there's it's really good content, but it's kind of spread out you know, between some things. So um, if you can edit it down to about a minute, I mean, like this one was a minute and a half, but if you can edit it down to about a minute, that would be helpful because, you know, five minutes, um, it's, it's hard to do on an audio show. Yeah, exactly. So that, that, that was a very, that, that was a very good video. That was like 45 seconds. That was the perfect timing of what you'd want to see. Uh, in, so in terms now of Joe was asking in chat, he was saying, what was that program that always records the last 10 minutes? So I use Raptor. Um, and that, that is a, that is a program that can run. Um, it's bundled with AMD cards usually. <laughs> Or you can use Shadow Play, yeah. and the Shadow Play is available um, with your GeForce um, NVIDIA drivers. So whichever one works. I have an NVIDIA card, but the Shadow Play doesn't work for me correctly, um, so I use Raptor. But you can try one of those two programs. I just tell it to record the last 10 minutes. I hit Control forward slash on my keyboard, and it'll save the last 10 minutes of gameplay. Yeah, it's a nice little DVR feature. It's like Stuff like that you're probably not recording anyway. So it's a nice yeah. thing to have, or unless you have got unlimited hard drive space and you can just record 24 hours a day. Yeah. Oh, and the other quick thing about the, um, the, the contest, don't put copyrighted music in your uh, yes. the videos as well. Because we, we get have, flagged. Yeah, we get, we get a flag on our channel. So if you have music uh, in it, just get rid of that. And, and if it's like a live stream or something and there's music, uh, just put that in the notes and Brian and I will download it and sub over the music with with. Creative Commons music, music that we can play and not get a, a strike for. So um, yeah. we can just, just do that. It keeps, every, keeps everybody happy. And that's one thing. We've actually, Nick's been uploading some of these past um, <laughs> tips of the week yeah. separately too. So um, one that we did cover was this um, recording software. So once he gets that one uploaded, you can go check it out. But um, you know, this is one thing that is really excellent for getting those hackers. Because you can record and you see someone who's doing something inappropriate you can record that and then send it in, um, upload to YouTube, and then send the link to Daybreak. Yeah, and maybe, Brian, since you've used Raptor, maybe you can do a quick little tutorial video, like a screen crap, a screen cap, and, you know, like, hey, this is what you do, this is how you set it up kind of thing. Um, and that may be useful yeah. as well. But I am uploading the past tips of the week. Uh, they're, they're quick videos. They're like three or four minutes, uh, depending on the week, maybe five. Uh, and I'm just uploading our past. So, like, I'm like once a day or once every two days, I'm just going to release the last, what, I have, like, 18 more to upload or something like that. So yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm catching up. Yeah, we're catching up. I, I decided, I was like, hey, we should probably be uploading these as well. And people seem to be liking them. So, yeah, um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, that's tips of the week, and we'll be throwing all that stuff. And our YouTube channel is uh, infectionpodcast.com slash YouTube, or just click the... Uh, God, people are always making fun of me in chat. So we, so we didn't talk about explosives. So what are some of the different types? Do you want to list off the t- types of explosives in game? Uh, yeah, they're the Molotov. That's in game. Yes, there's that's the, the first time I've ever what, heard it come yeah, out we've correctly. Got, we've got the, with the M8, the M, I don't know. There's other Have types. you been looping that on your iPod so that you <laughs> the can- The whole show, uh, I just hear it. Molotov, 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 Molotov. Molotov. <laughs> 
Yeah, I just I put it on my phone and I just go to sleep and it just loops all night. <laughs> Yeah, that no, yeah, Abraham. We have we have all these funny things over team speak that uh, the way people think they're making yeah, fun of me that. because I said screen crap instead of screen cap. <laughs> did you say screen crap? I did. Oh my. This is the infection podcast. The H one Z one podcast. Thank you. Maybe this is why the daybreak doesn't recognize us as a, as a It's podcast. like we've gone into total like after show mode. <laughs> I we haven't even ended the show yet. Hey, if you want to know what the after show is like, this is what the after and show is like. And actually, quickly, I'm going to show this, Brian. Uh, people, people, people are going to give me some crap for this as well. People are always wondering what I'm doing during the show. Um, so I just put this picture on Twitter while you were doing tips of the week, and I took a quick panorama of my setup, and you can kind of see what's going on during the show. Uh, so I've got the three monitors up there. I've got Brian on the upper right. Uh, the, the middle is where we show all the stuff, and then the, the left-hand monitor is, is OBS and Twitch. So some people had some questions about that stuff. So I'm not just sitting here and doing nothing. I, I'm actually yeah. I'm doing stuff during the show. So let's uh, we'll, we'll throw that out there. So that's that, that was an interesting thing. I, you were talking, and I was like, hey, perfect time to take this. My, we might as well do something else. Yeah, I know. Who, can, who cares what, <laughs> what Brian's saying? <laughs> no, don't pay attention. I went to the store, grabbed some food, came back. You were still talking about tips of the week, so, so it was good. <laughs> Um, yeah, that works. Yeah, so well, I think so. I think we covered everything for this week. I mean, hopefully, we'll see. Next week is going to be kind of a different week with the uh, quality of life. So we'll see what kind of stuff is implemented in that. I think we will have a lot to talk about because then they'll put out the full list of quality of life stuff, which I'm kind of yes. excited about. There's so. going to be. It, I hope it's like a laundry list of stuff. I I hope there's at least like 25, 30 items on there, just little stuff that they've fixed, and we can just go down and and, and knock them all off. And I hope they're clear. That's their big problem. They never. They're never clear with their wording. Yeah. Like, what does expire mean? Like, d remove, just come on, help us out there. So we'll have a lot of that next just week. Just say sure. the actual phrase. Yeah, just, there we go. We'll, we'll find out next. It'll give us something to talk about. And actually, Brian, we're sub two hours. So this is, this is a milestone. I know, this is, this is an hour and 45 minute show. This is not even an hour 45 minutes. We're at an hour 40 right now. So right this, under. Is, yeah. this is perfect. Um, this is our goal. Brian with an eye Aldridge. This is an hour over our goal. Brian with an eye okay, Aldridge. Okay, <laughs> Where can people find you on the internet? Yeah, if you want to go to Bite of Tech with an I, of course, biteoftech.com, or if you'd like to go to google.com forward slash plus Brian Aldridge, um, you can go to my Google Plus page. And of course, go to infectionpodcast.com. There's a contact form over there. And I haven't given... I feel like I haven't given my pitch for the uh, for the clan lately. So if you want to become a part of our clan and you maybe you play and lately you've had a drop off in the number of players with your groups, um, you're more than welcome to, to come check us out. Go to infectionpodcast.com, go to clan, and then there is a join us. That goes through every step that you need as far as getting on our team speak, um, registering on our forums, creating your character on the proper server. Uh, go check that out and you can join us in game. Yes, there you go. So you can do all that stuff as well. Um, the website, of course, is infectionpodcast.com. We're on TuneIn. We're on Stitcher. We're pretty much wherever you can get a podcast. Uh, we're also on SoundCloud as well. Uh, so all of those places are on there. You can join our forums. Vote for us. Uh, this is another thing, Brian. We forgot to mention this. Uh, if you go to our website, it's infectionpodcast.com. I'm not sure how well I can show it on the screen because I think it's going to be cut off. Um, but you, the, you can vote for us for the daily co top clan. So you just click this green icon that says vote now, uh, and you enter and vote. And uh, we're, we're, we're building up our votes on the uh, H1Z1 clans dot directory website. So it's yeah, H1Z1 click H1Z1 vote clans. now and yeah, enter and vote, and then that'll vote for us as one of the top clans. So yeah, if you listen, go. consider yourself part of the clan, consider, consider yourself part of the infection podcast group, um, come in and vote for us. Yeah, there we go. So um, that's pretty much it. I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. We do this show live. We've got to stress this. We do the show live every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern uh, Standard Time. And you can join us in the chat. We're live on Twitch. We're also live on InfectionPodcast.com. My name is Nick Craig. InfectionPodcast.com is the website. And we'll see you next week for Infection. Have a good week, everybody.